how do we start? Um, I um, basically uh, had talked with Catherine several times uh, about this project, probably more than <laughs> whatever. But anyhow, I had changed my mind uh, three different times. Uh, and I had all different kinds of ideas. And if you give an artist a lot of time, they'll change, all right? I mean, that's what we do. Uh, and, uh, but basically, uh, uh, I started out thinking about doing things out at the foundry and the forest and doing things like that. And then I just decided to, I had this actual dress here hanging in my studio. And <clears throat> I liked the look of it. And I started realizing that it was, it was not just an object that I had printed, but it had become an art object. And I had hung it behind some words. When you get into that, I had hung it in my studio uh, with, it's the last sentence from Alice in Wonderland. But the actual starting of this came with this piece over here. And that's the reason it's in the show. I took a whole series of collages. Well, I took a series of prints that I had done at Flatbed Press with Catherine Brimberry, and um, these are what I would call the after images. Um, what I was doing was I was printing this young girl's dress here, right in here. You can kind of see, but I multi there's multiples on the print, and um, this is the collage part, and it's all cut up, and I realized I was gulping paper that's exactly what I started doing. <clears throat> the phrase, how did you dare, comes from, uh, the, from Shakespeare. <laughs> and I, I had it left over from something else in my files, you know, and I put it on there. And I just felt like it was right. It's from Macbeth, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And so I don't quite know why it was right. Maybe you all would. Uh, but I felt like it really worked. And um, I transferred it onto there. Um, the actual, so basically I was inking up a dress. And this was a series of dresses that my son, who's a costume designer, uh, had found for me. And it was a company called Prissy Missy. <laughs> Sorry, I just fell in love with the name. And I printed these dresses. And they were little girl dresses, made handmade dresses. They were beautiful, OK? And um, they had been in some kind of garage sale, and he found them. So anyhow, I printed them. And this is the aftermath of the print. In other words, I kept inking the dress. I kept moving the dress. and. At the end of it, Catherine said, you've got all this stuff on this piece of plexi, because we would ink the plexi, lay the dress down, run it through the press, pull a print, do it again, lay the dress down. And so that's why you see multiples. And it was all accidental, but sometimes the best art is the accident. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I just went, hmm. I didn't like them. I put them away. <laughs> And then during the pandemic, you know, you're playing around with stuff. And I started doing these collages. I did six of them. And <clears throat> this was probably, I think, the most successful. Uh, I like the others as well, but they're a little more minimal. This is very complicated. But it all started with that. Um, and with that, and going back, this dress over here, too, is also a um, a multiple print that was the background print. And this, uh, the title from this piece also comes from Macbeth. And it's uh, from the corner of the moon, but I put fallen from the corner of the moon, which is based in my mind of Alice falling or tumbling down into the well. And um, <clears throat> this piece here was a very, what we would call a ghost print. And then I went back and drew and drew and drew and built it 
I always call it building. I don't call it quite drawing. I call it building, almost like a sculpture again. So that started that. <clears throat> and these other pieces here uh, kind of came along with it. Uh, but it started with these two pieces right here. This piece here I made years ago, but also it fit the whole feeling of what I was feeling with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It just really fit. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was the sorrow of this. Um, these are actual burnt roses that I actually burned <laughs> in a, a kill over and over, playing with different qualities. Every time I put it out, it kind of disintegrates. My hope is someday that it's just ashes. Don't you think that would be wonderful? <laughs> but um, it was about my father's passing. And we have lost so many people during the pandemic. I just felt like this belonged in the show. I just, it was just important. And <clears throat> the person that has influenced me a great deal with her poetry is Mary Oliver. I had to bring it. <laughs> and um, the title of this is called Uses of Sorrow. And I um, brought the uh, little poem. It's very short. Uh, In my sleep, I dreamed this poem. Someone I loved once gave me a box full of darkness. It took me years to understand that this, too, was a gift. That's it. Isn't that wonderful? I love it. So that piece right here was a tribute to, to my father, but it was also about the sorrow that I felt and the sorrow I still feel with, with the pandemic in our lives right now. And this is, um, um, I have done Nest before. This one was started a while back, and then I added more poetry to it. And the actual title of this, which uh, is a title, it came from a Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. I'm going to have to put my glasses. Mark, can you read that? The leaves whisper on their branches. Yes. Whisper. Don't you love that? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I like my art to whisper. I don't, I, you know, one of the things that I hope when people walk in here is that they feel a sense of quiet. But, I mean, it is melancholy. Uh, it's kind of sad. It is sad. Um, but also I want them to find some kind of peace with it. Um, but what I did with this piece was I added more poetry. I added more leaves. I felt like, uh, a clustering or a gathering of these leaves. And these leaves are uh, bronze, and <clears throat> they are black oak and fiddle oak, which are leaves out at the foundry. And I use those rather than some of the leaves that we have out here because they're woody is a good word for them. And they cast beautifully. <laughs> and I was surrounded by them. and. The nest to me is surrounded by the leaves, a kind of comforting kind of thing. It's not that and I wanted to feel it's down like this because I wanted you to feel like then you know, how you're walking along and, and you see the, the leaves. And I wanted that feeling. So shall we talk about the big one? <laughs> the big one. Coming up, thinking about this installation coincided with a big change in your life that was happening even, even without the pandemic. Yes. There was enough going on for you. There was a lot of sadness. Um, true. Um, uh, my partner of <clears throat> almost 20 years, Harry Gefford, uh, we had been working together, not necessarily as partners, but as friends, since 1985, which is a long time. That's when I started casting things. And uh, I didn't know anything about it. and. Harry was a magnificent artist who also um, uh, was very giving with his skills and knowledge. And he started a foundry. And Francis Bagley 
an artist here in town told me about Harry. And I started working with him, and over the years, our friendship grew into a connection. And uh, there were no surprises when we did get together. We knew each other quite well. Uh, but also, too, we had this intellectual bond that I've never had with anybody. And uh, I still miss him. So, um, but there are things in here that reference him. Um, I started playing with this on my tabletop in my studio. And laying this out is kind of a memorial. The dress was given to me. The poem behind is Alice in Wonderland. Um, I was quite uh, ill. I'm, I am a breast cancer survivor. And during that time, I read Alice in Wonderland. This book meant a lot to me. I picked this picture. A friend, an artist friend of mine gave me the book. It was his mother's book. And it was published in 1949. And the colors are magnificent in it. And I read that book. The, this is the newest poet that I love, W.S. Merwin, Garden Time. It's a beautiful poem. I just started putting things down here that uh, I hoped people would be interested in, but also kind of a narrative, and this is rather unusual for me because usually I'm singular. I call it singular, singular dress, singular, you know, a kind of sing, and all of a sudden putting all of these things down, it just became a, um, I don't know how, like a, a narrative that I didn't quite expect to happen. So thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Because basically, it became something new to me. And uh, Tom Vaccaro built the table under my design, which is wonderful. And uh, little did I know that we were relating to the windows <laughs> and the door. It was like I made it for you all. You know, it's like it's amazing, you know. But I have different things on here. This, this little uh, silhouette here that probably you all have seen many of those over your lifetime. Uh, this was given to me by a friend, and it reminded me of my mother. Uh, the point piece of paper I found, and when I was going to Catholic school, uh, <laughs> they had these little cards, and I always loved them because they were illustrated. They always had an illustration, and I found that one. It has a bronze thorn. The, the steel woman there, that is, I did a whole series in, <clears throat> in the 90s of, of the president's wives. And this is, for goodness sakes, Beth Truman. <laughs> it's the only one I had left. The rest of them were different places. Uh, but I had Beth. Nobody wanted Beth, but I liked her. Uh, <laughs> she kind of fits my time period. Um, the rose I constructed for this I wanted to have um, a graphite rose. Well, the clock was actually done by an artist named Eric Zimmerman. The clock was like my parents' clock. That's the reason I got it from him. The book, I felt like this, uh, Joseph Cornell was a really important artist to me. And, you know, uh, I found this book, um, and in the back of it, it is his obituary. And it really, I just felt like that fits. And this is kind of the box of memorabil memorabilia. Didn't say that quite well. The hand was a hand that Harry had, and I gold leafed it. The words on that, I'm going to see if I can read them. And beginnings have been going so strangely since. Fits, doesn't it? Um, it did start with the dress, that was the start. And I just, the very last thing that I put on there was that word, the words on the structure there. That was the last thing. Um, I, when I <clears throat> gathered everything up, we packed everything to bring it down here, I got really sad um, because I felt like I'm exposing it to a public arena and was I ready to do that? 
And uh, I wanted it to be elegant, though. I wanted it to be uh, a memorial. And, and uh, I wanted it to talk about beauty. <laughs>